winter solstice or Yule and it extends to tomorrow, December 22nd. Um, I just finished up celebrating the solstice with my boyfriend um, and I'm heading home. Uh, and I had been, I've been meaning to record this video and I just haven't. So I figured since I have a good two hours left to my drive, might as well take a few minutes to uh, educate everyone on what Yule and the winter solstice is. So, the winter solstice is something that scientists agree upon that it occurs, and Yule is the spiritual part of this. Um, I believe I mentioned this last year during my spring equinox in Ostera uh, video, where I was like, yeah, the spring equinox is a thing that happens, you know, and then Ostera is the pagan belief. A spiritual belief of what all of that entails. Um, so it's the same thing for Yule. It's the same thing for Sowin and the uh, well, not Sowin. Uh, it's the same thing for Mabin, which is the uh, autumn equinox, and uh, Lamas, which is the uh, summer solstice. Uh, so yeah, it's those those four holidays out of the eight that most of us celebrate. They're generally agreed upon by the scientific community. Yet that yes, this is a thing that occurs. Um, the winter solstice is when uh, the time of how long there is sunlight and how long there is night moonlight is exactly even. Um, and it is the same thing for the summer solstice. It's when it's exactly even. The difference is, is that with the winter solstice, it's starting, the daytime is starting to increase again. And what this means spiritually is that the sun cycle is restarting. The sun is being reborn and we are able to uh, look forward to the fact that you know, we're going to make it through the winter and that, you know, we're overcoming the darkness, sun is coming back, that general idea. Um, there are more in-depth uh, beliefs on what Yule is. Some uh, use the green man and the goddess. Uh, in Kemeticism, there's... Uh, Egyptian, one of the Egyptian gods and goddesses are, you know, having a thing, and yeah, a lot of the time it's the gods and goddesses are duking it out, but they're in a relationship, and they love each other, and they sacrifice something in order for the cycle to restart, and for life to continue. Um... It's a very interesting holiday because, okay, the thing is, is that so many pagans are like, Christians stole the winter solstice and they made it Christmas and Christmas is a lie. One, in my opinion, everyone needs to calm down, okay, because Christmas and Yule are two very different things. Yes, they are both winter holidays, and yes, they occur around the winter solstice. They are two very different things for two very different faith paths. So people need to calm down. All right. Um, what the winter, most of us know the Christmas story of, from Christianity, Jesus is born three wise men came and gave frankincense, gold, and myrrh. Uh, you know, the star led them that, you know, every, everyone kind of knows this because, um, especially if you're in America, because America is, is low-key a theocracy. It is low-key a theocracy from Christianity. Let's get that out there. So everyone knows these stories, but the what you what people don't know a lot of the time is that 
when Christmas was becoming a thing, um, because a lot of scholars even look into the Bible and say there's no way that Christ was born in December, he was born like in April or something, you know, like people are saying like that he was born in spring, not winter, like this is evident by things in the Bible. Um, what I'm going to say about that, because I am not a, a scholar of the Bible, I was raised Christian, but I am not a scholar of the Bible by any means at all, um, is that Jesus is said to be the Son of God. The Son is being born. The winter solstice represents the sun cycle beginning or, in other terms, the sun being reborn. I will say that that is a correlation that you cannot deny, all right? What I'll also say is that there is record of Christianization going on, um, and that's why a lot of pagans are for lack of a better term, but hurt about like Christian holidays getting all the like attention and stuff. But let's go through and I'll t the same way we did with Ostera and I'll t tell you a little bit about the stuff, right? Okay, so Christmas tree began as the Yule log. The Yule log is basically they, they people recognize that the evergreen trees that we use for Christmas trees did not die in the winter. And so these trees were looked at as this is proof that we will prevail through the winter and through the darkness because this tree can do it so we can too. So what the Yule log was, was people would take a tree, an evergreen tree, and they would cut a branch, or if it was like a whole big family, they would cut down the tree and separate it into smaller logs. And they would burn this for 12 days leading up to the winter solstice. 12 days? Why does that sound familiar? On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. That's why. So they would burn this this log in the fireplace for 12 consecutive days leading up to winter solstice, December 21st. They would then save the ashes of this log for next year. And then the next year, they would repeat the process. They would, you know, use the, they would chop down an evergreen tree, the log, burn it for 12 consecutive days but they would use the ashes of the last year's tree or the last year's yule log to basically be the um god what's the word called the uh like the fire starter what it starts with the t i don't know but like the the stuff that starts the fire you know they would use that as kind of like here we're going to because then it it recognized that last year we succeeded. This is proof that last year we succeeded. We're going to start again this year and succeed again. It was a continuous cycle. And that's what Yule and the Winter Solstice is about, is the continuous cycle of perseverance through the darkness, through winter, right? The other thing is ornaments on the Christmas tree. Ornaments were actually originally called witch balls or witches balls. Um, and what they were was basically they, uh, pagans would use um, a clear crystal ball, right? And they would put intentions for the next year into it. Now these witches balls were not only used for 
Yule, ti Yule time, but they could be used in any spell. I'll, if you guys are interested, I'll do a whole video on witches' balls just in general, You're, you know? But um, they were used, basically you put in like, oh, I want to succeed in this, I want to succeed in this. Um, people, there are pagan beliefs that different stones represent different things. You would put different stones to represent those things into it, and then you would hang it up and keep it there. This translated into Christmas tree ornaments. That is where the Yule log and the witch's balls turn into the Christmas tree ornaments. Um, it's a very, it's a, it's very interesting to see how those, like having that information and then seeing how the Christians put so much into the Christmas tree and the ornaments. It kind of gives you a, a good chuckle by yourself. <laughs> But, um, you know, like, being raised Christian, the Christmas tree was always important. We always had, like, you got to, as a kid in school, you made, like, ornaments and stuff, and it's fun, you know? And so I recommend that if you don't really know what you want to do for this Yule, or if there's something, if you are living in a Christian home or a home that's just not accepting of the pagan faith, because maybe, you know, some other other faiths and people who are not who do not have a faith such as atheists you know sometimes they're not accepting if you are in a home that is not accepting of your pagan faith and you want to do something to represent your faith this year but you don't want to spread it around and cause an issue this holiday season I recommend making an ornament go back to when you were in kindergarten and you cut out a little, you know, construction paper thing and you wrote your name on it and you ripped up all of the tissue paper and you s stuck it around and you made a cool little craft. Do that and put on it in different symbols. You don't have to write it down, but like put on it in different symbols what you want to bring to your life this sun cycle and I recommend you hang it up after afterwards you hang it up somewhere in your room where you can see it and be reminded of what you want to accomplish this sun cycle so that's my little story on Yule and the winter solstice I hope everyone has a good one um, and yeah I promise I won't post this video until I am home safe so don't worry I'm not gonna be on YouTube like trying to upload this video we're good <laughs> all right I'll talk to you all later bye